right over there. <laughs> My name is Catherine and I'm known on the Instagram as the AI girl. I work in machine learning and I share daily about anything related to AI. Today I'll show you how you can set up your own machine learning environments. This video was actually suggested by the EP Hacker and she's also here on YouTube and on Instagram so you should definitely check her out. So setting up an environment for machine learning. One thing about machine learning is that it's a broad field and the application possibilities are endless. Which means that you may work with images or text or signal or any kind of medium really. And working with images and text does not require the same kind of packages. For example, working with images, you might want to get the OpenCV packages. OpenCV is a well-known packages to manipulate images and do data augmentation and stuff like that. Whereas text, you might want to get the transformer packages because transformers are well known to work very well with text and that's what you'll use to create your models. And the problem with having multiple packages installed in the same place is that you can run into package dependency problems. Let's say OpenCV requires a certain package at a specific version to work. And Transformers requires that same packages but at the latest version to work. So you won't be able to make both of them work in the same environments. So what we'll usually do is create Python environment for each of our machine learning projects. Now this will take care of the dependency problem, but there is definitely a couple more advantages to build an environment for each of your machine learning projects. First one is if you're working with a client and you're delivering a, a, your project, well you will also deliver the environment that you built your project in, so that your client only needs to install the package it really needs to make that project work. And if you still need to work on that project in the future, well, you still have access to those specific version of those packages. And this brings us up to the second advantage, because yes, packages evolve in time and sometimes really fast. In a machine learning framework, a certain function would change name or it will change uh, in which model it is. So if you're not working in the same version of your code, you might run into errors. So having an environment where all your versions are saved in, you can always take up a project that you've put to the side and finish it. And once it's done, you can then update it to the newest packages version because, you know, the newest version will always optimize for so, some kind of stuff. So if you want to do that after your project is done, it will be much more easier than trying to work out what doesn't work because of the packages and what doesn't work because it never really did work when you were working on that project. And lastly, if you're working with someone else, it's much easier to work on the same environment because you're gonna work with the same packages and the same version of packages. So there are multiple package managers available out there and the one I'm gonna show you today is Conda. Now in Conda, you have two possibilities. You can install either Anaconda or Miniconda. Anaconda comes with about 1500 packages installed in that package. So when you create a new environment, you already have a bunch of packages in there. It's useful if you're new to Python and you don't know really how to install packages. So you'll all have the necessary packages to do your project probably already there. The downside, it's, it's gonna take a lot of memories to build your environment. As with Minicoda, it's an empty project. You're gonna have to install every package as yourself, but if you're like me and you like Linux and installing stuff by yourself, you're gonna love Minicoda. So that's the one we're gonna work with today. Install Minicoda. You simply need to go to Google and type install Minicoda. Miniconda. Now you select the installer for your operating system. I have Linux, so I'm gonna download that one. While we wait for the download, which is already ready, we can go to the installation instruction. Uh, Linux. So we just need to copy and paste this command in the terminal to launch the installation. So I'm gonna make a YouTube directory. Oh, I'm gonna make, I said and go to that directory 
and then I'm gonna launch that installation except that the install file is not here it's in on the AI unicorn unicorn yes I called my computer the AI unicorn I have no regrets download and this should be here enter this is the end user license agreement you should read that I have read that in the past so I'm just gonna skip it for now and you press yes uh, this is the location where you want to install miniconda I already have miniconda installed on my computer so I'm just gonna uh, install it Minicorn. Uh, in the YouTube folder I just made to show you how the installation is going like so so do you wish to install it to initialize Miniconda? I'm gonna say no because I already have a Miniconda install and I want to continue using that one no so now that we have Conda install, we're gonna create an environment. So we're gonna search here, create environment. And I press enter. So just loading slowly, there you go. So we're gonna go to managing environments and we're gonna create environment with command. So here we have Conda create name my env. So basically we're just gonna remove my env and change that to a name. Usually I will name the env environment uh, with my project. So if I want to create a, detec a cat detector, I'm gonna name it cat detector. But here we're gonna name it uh, YouTube, you, YouTube, Y2, there you go. And it's gonna create that empty environment. Uh, yes, please. So once it's created, you need to activate it because you don't want to install packages in uh, your native environment. You want it to install it in this environment. That's why we created an environment. And it's important to activate it. I've made that mistake multiple times. Okay, so now that we have our empty environment, we can start with the fun part and installing some packages. Now for machine learning, you need a machine learning framework to make your model work. Basically, a framework where you'll have all the necessary functions to build a model. So there is two main framework in Python for machine learning, and those are TensorFlow and PyTorch. TensorFlow is made by Google and PyTorch is made by Facebook. Both have their pros and cons, and if you want a more in-depth video on that, I can definitely make one, and I have made multiple posts about it on Instagram if you want to check those out. But I personally prefer PyTorch, so that's the one I'm gonna show you how to install today. Let's go to PyTorch website. And click on the install button here, and now you just select what is your uh, computer parameters so here you can choose to either install stable or nightly nightly is the unstable version so there's a lot of bug it's the most up-to-date version but you might not want to have that one so we're gonna stay with the stable where every function has been tested and should work perfectly uh, your OS I have Linux the package we're using Conda uh, we're staying in Python and the compute platform I have an NVIDIA GPU so we're gonna go with the CUDA 11.1 and then it just generates your uh, custom installation command so you just have to run that in a terminal. Machine learning requires a lot of computation to work and those computations can either be done on a CPU or a GPU. A, a GPU is a graphic card. Uh, those computations gonna be much faster done on a GPU versus a CPU. If you don't have a GPU on the computer, that's fine. You can still work on a CPU, it's just gonna be much more slower. If you want an alternative of having your own GPU, I can definitely make some video about it. But if you want to check out those right now, you can go and look at Google Collab, which allows you to 
use free GPUs for 12 hours or 24 hours at a time, I don't remember, but yes, we can do a more in-depth video on that if you are interested in it. And it's gonna collect all the package that PyTorch needs to run. Uh, it needs packages like NumPy, which is in array manipulation package. Uh, so this is all the package it should install and say yes proceed ahead so theoretically you should be good to go with just that pytorch package install but one that package that i absolutely love to have and cannot live without is notebooks notebooks basically allows you to have live code and what live code mean is that if you are working with data well if you're working with machine learning hopefully you're working with data but if you're working with data, you can you can view basically your data in your notebook. So you can explore it, see what kind of process you need to do before fitting it to the network, see what could be wrong, what values are missing, and all stuff like that. So you can view your data, you can build your function live, so you can test and make quick changes and not have to run a script every time you make a single change. If you're like me and you're a clumsy coder, you might need to run your function a couple of times before it runs, so that's why I absolutely love notebooks. So what I will do when I start a new project is I will build everything in a notebook from start to finish, pre-processing of the data, build the data set, build the data loader, build my model, train my model, build the post-processing step, build the validation and accuracy, and when everything works, I'm gonna build my package on that and create scripts so I can do more specific training with fine-tuning the hyperparameters and stuff like that. So for notebooks, you can either download JupyterLab or Jupyter Notebooks. JupyterLab is more recent and there's a couple of cool features that you can do with it that's more fun than the standard notebooks. So that's the one I'm gonna show you how to install today. Install JupyterLab. Jupyter Lab, Project Jupyter, install Jupyter Lab. Just gonna run the conda install command. Copy and paste this. Yes, go ahead. And there you go. So we're just gonna launch Jupyter Lab with this command. Oh, not three times, just once. There you go. So it's gonna open in your browser. Uh, you can either run it with a dark team like this, or if you're special and you like the light team, you can switch it to light. Uh, so here we're not seeing the environment I just created. So let's uh, show you how programmers do. Okay, so we just Google, I know how to do it, but let's just say I don't know how. So, C, so conda environment in Jupyter Lab. How to add conda environment to Jupyter Lab. So we're gonna go to Stack Overflow. Ah, here, so we activate the conda. We have to install IPy kernel because we want uh, to create a kernel of our environment in the Jupyter Lab so it's accessible and we can uh, have access to that environment when we code in our notebooks. So we're just gonna uh, split this into activate our environment y2. Here we're gonna install the ipy kernel. Once it's installed we're gonna make their kernel for our environment. Uh, there you go. So uh, name, any name for kernel. So we're just going to name it the same name as our environment, y2. And there you go. Uh, so it should be, just refresh. And there you go. So we want to create a notebook in our environment and let's just test if PyTorch works. So Torch is working, so we're just gonna see 
the function that is acceptable to us. So to do that, you type the name of the package, dot, and then you press tab. So it's just gonna show you all the function you can use. And if we try another package that was installed with Torch, which is NumPy, so we're gonna import NumPy as NP. And when you run a command in a notebook, you can either click here uh, run the selected cell in advance or you can just press shift enter. So here we want to use np array but you don't really remember how this function works so you can just add a question mark and then press shift enter and then this is just going to show you how that function works. So this basically creates an array. It shows you what it takes as input and what are the optional inputs and here it's going to show you what it returns. So it's returning n and the array Plus, there is example on how to use them and what will be the results. And there you have it, your machine learning environment to create your machine learning project. Uh, so in the next video, I'm going to go through a couple of tutorials on PyTorch to get us started. If you're excited and want to start right away, go ahead and uh, just go to the PyTorch website and there should be a tutorial section where it shows you how to begin with PyTorch and how to build your own model. And yes, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.